Mr. Fuller presented a particularly audacious proposal for the geoscope. It was a 200-foot diameter geodesic sphere to be sighted suspended over the East River in New York City in full view of the United Nations. It was a big idea for sure, and it was one that he, he felt could truly inform and, and deeply affect the decision-making of this body through, through animations of, of global data, trends, and uh, other information regarding the globe on this sphere. And today, 45 years later, we, we clearly have no less need for this kind of clarity and perspective. But what we do have is improved technology. Today, we don't need one million light bulbs to create a spherical display. We can use LEDs. LEDs are smaller, they're, they're cheaper, they're longer lasting, they're more efficient. Most importantly for this, they're faster. And this speed, combined with today's high-performance microcontrollers, allow us to actually simulate in this piece, over 17,000 LEDs using just 64. And the way this happens is through the phenomenon of persistence of vision. That as this ring rotates at about 1,700 RPM, that's 28 times per second, the equator speed is actually about 60 miles per hour. There are four onboard microcontrollers that each time this ring rotates, <clears throat> it, as it passes to the rear of the display, it picks up a position signal. And from that, the the onboard microcontrollers can extrapolate the position of the ring at all points around the revolution and display arbitrary bitmap images and animations. But this is really just the beginning. In addition to higher resolution versions of this display, my father and I are working on a new patent pending design for a fully volumetric display using the same phenomenon. And it achieves this by rotating LEDs about two axes. So as you can see here, this is an 11 inch diameter circuit board. These blocks represent LEDs. And so you can see that as this disk rotates about this axis, it will create a disk of light that we can control. That's, that's nothing new, that's a propeller clock. That's the rims that you can buy for your car. But what is new is that when we rotate this disk about this axis, now this disk of light actually becomes a sphere of light. And so we can control that with microcontrollers and create a fully volumetric three-dimensional display with just 256 LEDs. And now this piece is currently in process due out in May, but what we've done is we've put together a small demo just to show the geometric translation of points into a sphere. And so I've got a little video to show you, but keep in mind that this is with no electronic control, and this is also with only four LEDs. This is actually only about one and a half percent of what the final display will be in May, so take a look. And here you can see it's rotating about the vertical axis only, creating circles. And then as the other axis kicks in, those actually blur into a volume. The uh, shutter speed of the camera actually makes it slightly less effective in this case. But th this piece is due out in May. Um, it'll be on display at the Interactive Telecommunications Spring Show in uh, Greenwich Village, New York City. That's open to the public. Definitely invite you all to uh, come and attend. It's a fantastic show. There's um, hundreds of student innovators with, with fantastic projects. This piece actually will be on display down in the Sierra Simulcast Lounge in the breaks uh, between now and the end of the show. So I'd love to talk to you all and invite you to come down and take a closer look. It's an honor to be here. Thanks very much. <laughs>